Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. And wherever you are, wherever I am, I'll praise his name forever. I don't know. Remember that old song that went from... Wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can. That's it. Is that the song? Something like that. Well, yeah. Well, wherever you are, Jeff Duffield, and wherever I am, Sue Duffield. I'm not certain where I am, but I have a pretty good idea. I know one thing. I know one thing. I will not camp under flowering trees in the month of May uh, again. Ah, yes. How old are you and how long have you done this? I don't this? know. I, I mean, you I finally learned your lesson. I think what happens is I get so excited about being outside mm-hmm. and I get so excited about being in God's nature Spring that every year is here. I forget about the tree pollen. Mm. Oh. No, you don't forget about the tree pollen. You forget about its effect on you. <laughs> and don't get me laughing, I'll get coughing. Well, don't laugh then. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, per se. Anyway, we're here. We're here. We're here, Lord, as my mother used to say and father (laughs) used to say. that was your father. That was your father. We're here, Lord. But this is episode number 51. 50 and one. One more episode, it'll be a full year. It. I just, it boggles my mind. I, when I mean, we started this. We said we were doing it for fun, and we almost, still are for them. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. almost. And yeah. And what did you tell me, what, a month into this, that the average podcast lasts how many episodes? Well, there are 3,000 new podcasts that are released around the world every day that's an average and that's that's mind-boggling in and that's of an average yeah. correct yeah. all right so you know obviously some days are more some days are less right but the from uh, my blistem conference which i've talked about many times on yes, this have. uh podcast justifiably Blistom. so right i learned so much and they did say that the average podcast mm-hmm. lasts seven episodes that's crazy. Yeah, because yeah. they get into it and they go, oh, this is too hard. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say. But you know what the problem is? What? I'll tell you what the problem is. Yes. With pro- and and the, 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 the second part to your statement, they say it's too hard. The subtext to that is they didn't realize it was going to involve this much time and work. It is work. However. However. They didn't come talk to me. <laughs> Not that I'm a podcast expert. By any stretch of the imagination, because no. I'm not. However, I've got 45 years of recording experience. And as you well know, I can set them up in a manner to where they're doing very little editing and very little yes. work. Yeah. If yeah. you do it right. Well, and here's another thing that I remember learning. Anyway, we should brag on ourselves. That no, we no, should no, save no. that for the next episode. Well, and we're near ten thousand, uh, ten thousand uh, downloads, which is which is that's that's, that's also, pretty good considering we're we're not you know a household name. Well, uh, out of this household, correct. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but what I. I really do realize is that I, I hit my hear that see I heard it I I, I need to edit myself <laughs> I, I touch the microphone you just need to sit still I know it's hard I talk with my hands I have to talk with my hands mm, I guess and see we would edit all of this out the the average person well, that there, does a podcast would edit everything we well, just did in the last there's 30 a seconds little, there's, out there's a little production secret <laughs> leave it in nobody cares no and the deal is. What I think a podcast of success is, yes, you want to learn something every time. Teach me something, okay? Yeah. Make me laugh. Yeah. And inspire me and Mm -hmm. encourage me and make me come back for more. No wonder they say it's too much work. (laughs) (laughs) Don't laugh hard. Don't laugh hard. Okay, Okay. I can't. All right. So I did write something down because today's episode is a very, very special episode, number 51. It's a special episodic event. Yes. This is a shout out to musicians. And so all musicians. And you know who you are. Yes. You're really going to be so glad that you listened today because Jeff has some real 
powerful insight. Oh, let's dump some pressure on Duffield. Yeah, man, you do. You've got 49 years or more, at least, in the recording studio and in production. You had to bring that total up. Yeah, and I'm I'm going to pick your brain today. I'm going to be the interviewer, and you're going to be the interviewee. Very good. Okay. I guess. So I did write this down. I okay. said, success comes in various ways, and what determines success is also a paradox right now to the world we live in. Mm. And I say that because to some, success is money, you know, lots of things, power, you know, lots of homes and boats and properties, whatever. That's success to them that you have arrived. If someone is listening to this podcast with that approach in mind, they need to switch to the next one in their list. <laughs> this, is, this isn't the right podcast This ain't for the that. one. <laughs> but I will say, though, however, mm-hmm. and you and I have talked about that even slightly today about what determines a true success. And I got to tell you, my thoughts are this. Success is being effective and inspirational with a giving and generous heart. Right. And I don't care if it's your family. I don't care if it's your friends. The more that you are generous with the abundance of talent that God has given you, the better the doors open wide. Mm -hmm. And I taught, you know, several years ago at a gospel music festival in Mm -hmm. Branson, Missouri. And I remember saying to a group of musicians, listen, we may have it backwards here. Mm -hmm. Some of you are investing so much in your merchandise table and the vehicles or the buses that you run, and you got all of the things in place, but there's no anointing on your life. Mm. And so if you're a Christian musician, and we want excellence, and right now, Jeff, you, you would agree with me on this one, our church right now is going through an incredible surge of reaching out to the musicians again in the city. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're pulling people out of the woodwork that we hadn't even... Lulu Roman, for one. Yeah. Chris Rodriguez, who has played for Toto and everybody that we can think of. And Tata. And (laughs) Tata. Musicians... No, you're right. And and, and here's what happens. Excellence in musicianship attracts... Yeah, Rebecca. And her name escapes me. Her last... Hoffman. Rebecca Hoffman, yes. Who... uh, She is the bass player for Steven Tyler. Right. Aerosmith. Right, she's now playing acoustic guitar, in and our she's band. a believer, and she loves oh, she's the Lord, a lo- and oh. she's a lovely young lady. I, you know, yeah. I want to have a conversation with her, and maybe yeah, we can you have need her to get, on here. Well, we need to we need to have uh, Chris, yeah, and Rebecca too. And we, we need will. to get them both we'll on. We'll do that, yeah, because that I think, uh, yeah, right. Okay, but go what ahead. we're seeing is, you know, post twenty twenty. I don't even use the word pandemic anymore. I'm done with it. I'm just going to say post-2020, what I am seeing, especially in in the music world, is that during this time when we had most of us were off the road or not doing our gigs or we weren't doing performances around the country or whatever you want to call it, many of musicians have stayed home and really worked at their craft. Mm. Uh, A lot of people in the recording studio a lot of songwriters writing music. It's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying by that is I think, though, we've all kind of been put into this little box a little bit that it's not just about the gig anymore. And I see that with the Isaacs. Right. I see their their heart. I see, oh, my goodness, every Sunday when they're not on the road, man, they are in church worshiping God and ministering and praying for other people. And in case you don't know, the Isaacs are a bluegrass family group. They do country as well as a bluegrass style gospel. Right. And uh, they, they're, they're cross-platform. They've played on the Opry oh, many times. Oh, it's just fabulous uh, to watch. And they've played bluegrass festivals, but, but at the same time, they've done a lot of gospel concerts. They've been on the Gaither videos. And you're right. They are, every one of them are just oh, wonderful. Oh, the real deal. Yeah, the real deal. They're wonderful people. They're sweethearts. Um, ben probably will not appreciate me calling him a sweetheart, but he is. <laughs> He's a good guy. He's a tall drink of water. Too, he's a big drink of water. Yeah, he's four or five gallons worth. Right. But they're but they're all wonderful people. From mom uh, to Sonia to Becky and to uh, to Ben, they're just wonderful people. I I just I'm very impressed with all of them. So I say all that to say, yeah, that maybe just maybe 2020 kind of uh, put our what we would call like what do you call it when you put a governor on a bus that you can only go 75 mile an you hour. Put a governor on it. All right. Well, so maybe. <laughs> So maybe, just maybe, 
2020 was a governor for all of the professional musicians in town. Or a, maybe a, maybe a reset. A reset. Maybe Correct. that's a better term. That I don't could know. be. A governor governor limits you to from going in you to past a certain point. Correct. Reset would be starting over again almost. And anyway, the ones that we've said over and over again, the ones that have had uh the blessing of God on their life, even when they've not had venues to sing and speak. Well, you're talking to a couple well, of them. Well, right. Yeah. Uh, and forgive me if I'm losing my voice, but that's okay. We're just going to keep going. Take a drink of water. But I think, here's my, my thoughts on this. I really, truly believe that the reset that you're talking about, and maybe even, you know, the, the governor that I'm thinking of that possibly keeps us from going too fast, that we've been able to sit down as as a as a craft and as an artist and say look what really matters here Mm -hmm. and wow i'm just going to say this there were a lot of singing groups in christian music that were not plugged in to their home church right there were a lot of them that sat home Yep. And got mad at God because yep. they didn't have a gig on a Sunday morning. Not a good thing to do. So guess what happens when yeah. you have that bitterness in your heart and yeah. you have that attitude about I deserve something because I'm called according to God, you know, and I, I and, you know, and let me say this. It's easy to do. Oh, it's frighteningly if, easy. If you've, That's done, if you've had something that you've done all your life. Right. Uh, removed from you overnight. It's easy to fall into that temptation. Uh, at, don't ask me how I know, but <laughs> it just is. Well, I know you but battled you that. I but know you did yeah. much more than I did. Yeah. And I'm but not you, saying that that's you, bad. No, I, I admit it. You know, I, I did, but, um, you just got to get over it. Right. And you got to realize, you know, what it says in Romans that all things work together Correct. for good. And, you know, the, the scripture verse that I mentioned, I think it's in Isaiah. I mentioned it a couple of months ago where I, I read the, you know, the prophet says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. That's right. And and we're evidence of it is what we're sitting here doing right now. This is a new thing. It is a new thing. For Jeff and Sue Duffield. Mm-hmm. And and he, and then also our Thursday night live stream thing that we do. Right. Who would have imagined 51 weeks ago when we started a podcast and the Thursday night couch to kitchen informal little thing that we do right. on online that it would get uh, a reach what are we up to? Close to a million people? Just about. Yeah, right. the analytics. In fact, a little are, bit more than that, actually. We, you know, we, in our traveling around the United States and Canada and, and for all low these many years, there was no way we reached and, and were able to sing and, and reach out to a million people. No way. Let right. alone all these foreign countries. Right. But there is the new thing that God has done. Because even though we did struggle, you know, a little bit about, okay, God, what am I going to do now? What what have we you brought me to? Right. Sometimes God does that to enable another door to open. Right. If we keep the right attitude. So that's, and what I want to add to that is, this is my shout out to all musicians that are listening. And I know, I know we have a lot of artists that listen and, and are tuned in to our podcast. We know you're out there. We, we see you. We know <laughs> because you're Because we know, uh, you know, musicians attract other musicians. And whether or not they're in full time, whatever, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But what, what, what I've learned is if they understand truly the principle of gratitude, mm-hmm. that, that's got to be the very first thing to overcome. Yep. And it's so easy because, man, I'll tell you, I know a lot of egotistical mus- musicians, yeah. you know, that they, here I am world, you know, uh, and, and it, it might work in some venues. It might work in some genres, but it does not work. Well, right. In the church. Okay? And our, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It. It and does our not. enemy, and we do have an enemy of our soul, right. who will speak to us and try to plant seeds of doubt, if you will, uh, and seeds of bitterness because, you know, let's face it, without an attitude of gratitude, and that's a catchphrase, yeah. but it's that's true. Okay. Without that, God can't work in our lives. No. And so we have to just make a decision that we're going to rise above that and say, listen, and, and as, as proven in the weeks, you know, in, in the previous weeks with us, I've stepped back and we took inventory, if you will, of where we are and what God has not only blessed us with in our lives, but also spared us from we've, we've heard stories of other folks that, you know, that have had much more dire circumstances than we've had to face. 
and God has spared us some and, and the provision that God, we shouldn't have had as much income last year as we did. Well, no, not in the not in the real realm. Not in a of, natural uh, accounting. No, no, and we no. have a uh, we have bean counters as friends, and let me tell you, right. I've I told them a couple of times, you won't believe it, and they right. look at me dumbfounded. It, yeah, because they just don't get it. Right. And at the same time, there and was, it was a few of them that God are. Thing. It yeah. was a God thing. That's right. No, because there's not we you and I cannot take credit for it. Oh, and listen, it, it it's ongoing. Yeah, and what uh, yeah, I, it is. What yeah. I pray for this. Okay, every day is a gift. Right. You know, every breath is a gift. The mere fact that you wake up and your eyes open in the morning right. is a blessing. Absolutely. So, but the, the problem is musicians can become very emotional people. I, I really think we're, we operate on, the, you know, the, the right side of the brain much more. You know, it's less logic and more on the feeling aspect of it. Well, I mean, musicians are performance based. I mean, right. what we do, it draws people's right. attention to us. Right. So, you know, there, there's that thing that you, you work with there to begin with. It's a I'll just be flat out honest about it. It's an ego stroke. Yeah. To what we do. And we've got to guard against that. Right. You what know? are the ways, though, Jeff? Can, can you tell us maybe in, in your own experience how because quite frankly you are I, i'm the singer and i know i have gifts in my own right but truthfully you are the musician and and i have seen and i'll be honest with with the audience right now i have seen where you have dipped sometimes um going down a, a rough road because maybe you didn't get the recognition that you thought you deserved or maybe you didn't get paid what you thought you were you know worthy of being paid and this is not unusual for most men anyway who develop a career or, or looking towards, you know, how I'm providing for my family, that kind of thing. And I'm surely not saying that that's wrong, but how have you dealt with specifically and tell the audience, how, how have you specifically dealt with not being overcome with ego and how that when that ego stroke isn't there, not to walk away disappointed? Well, how many podcasts are we going to devote to this? Well, <laughs> Just one, because okay, just I want one. you to... <laughs> I know. No, we're, it won't take that long. Uh, well, you, you've got to realize, again, like I just said, I just finished saying, we have to be thankful for what we do have, what God has blessed us with. There are so many things that you and I, you know, and myself personally have been blessed with, the opportunities to do the things that we've done. And, and I, it wasn't so much starting out with me when when circumstances arose where I wasn't necessarily paid or paid at all, or, you know, what I thought I should, or, or whatever recognition, it was more, uh, it it wasn't, it started out as a, a thing, not that I have to be recognized, but in my thinking, in my warped sense of thinking, well, God, you placed me in this position. You called me, at least I felt you did. Why hasn't it advanced quote unquote further. Right. And yet, but yet you can see there just that question alone. Put yourself in a crazy predicament of well, saying, God, doing, I, I'm disappointed. Well, what, yeah. And what you're doing there is you're comparing and, yeah. and none of us, regardless if we're an attorney, uh, regardless if we're a bank vice president, research, uh, ph- physicists, or, uh, if we're the mailman, or the, the, the truck driver that delivers the, the food to the grocery store, whatever it is, we cannot compare uh, ourselves, our situations to other people. Right. And that is the one big negative thing about, here it comes, social media. Well, because yes. everybody, myself included, you, mm-hmm. you, you as well, everybody, we're going to put ourselves on social media in our best light so it looks to the other person that doesn't know all the background right what it took to get to that photo on social media well you know look how god's blessing them yeah. and you're and you know again the enemy is going to speak to us and say well you're not you're not getting to do that well and it leads to my second principle we talked about the uh, principle of gratitude which you have you do have that i tried to but what what <laughs> comes next i think is the principle of humility right because what humility may be probably one of the most misunderstood maybe an un- underappreciated aspects of our human experience i don't mean that it 
means you putting yourself below others, but right. letting people walk all over you or acting like you're inferior or unworthy in any way, that that's not what you want either. No. So, no. but I have watched you, and and I and I want to say this because you have an amazing gift. We know that uh, piano players, <laughs> they're hard to find, the the good ones, and you have pretty much in this town. Um, You've created a name for yourself uh, that people that hear you, especially now in the format of our church, where that's going out to thousands and thousands and thousands of people every week, they're hearing what you can do. But I watch when when someone comes up to you and says, wow, I just really appreciate how you frame uh, around your pastor when he's speaking, or I, I like when you're doing this these interludes and the special chords. And we watched it yesterday when mm-hmm. a friend of yours that you met at, at a conference came up to you and said, "Wow, I'm I'm I know what he was trying to say. He was really trying to say, man, you create the atmosphere, right. and you cannot create the atmosphere just by talent." No, I no, think that that and as I tried to say to him as well, and you know this, you know I feel this way. Uh, and this, I think this is how I, if this sounds arrogant, but this is how I managed to remain humble, if you will. Um, uh, in the fact that it's not me, well, it, it's not no, me that, that does that's this. That's a perfect I, answer. That, it's, it's a perfect answer. Mm-mm. Right. And here's the thing. No one. All right. You're ready for this one. No one is attracted with, to anyone that has an ego. Right. And, and, and in worship band experiences of leading worship groups and worship bands for years, Right. We've actually added by subtraction, yeah. getting people off the stage that it's all about their ego. Be careful, you're going to another podcast. I know. Well, <laughs> what I'm I'm just being honest and saying sometimes we, it's better to have a, a musician that or a singer or a. Uh, well, none know. of us should again, like you said, especially in church, none of us should have an ego. Right. Um, and you know the one thing I love about country music and and the love about Nashville. Is you get down here and as we did twelve years ago, and you get to meet a lot of people, oh, and we've been so blessed wonderful. to meet a lot of wonderful yeah. people in the country right. music business. And you'd be amazed at how many of them do not have uh, egos. There, there are, they're there, but yeah. there are many of them. Ha- and, and nine times out of ten, the ones that don't have the egos, you get around them long enough, and you find out they're a believer. Well, and it's just wonderful. And I they mean, know, and they realize that their proportion. talent yeah. is God given. Right. Now right. they put in the work. Yes, that's right. You know, and like like uh, my friend was commenting yesterday about the substitutions and chord extensions I was playing. I wish I could tell you that I had a master's degree in music that enables me to do that. Yeah, uh, it's it's what I've learned on my own uh, through work and through listening and through practice. But it's God that's given me the ability to learn it and and to do what I do. It, it's simply that. So I'm gratified, and I, but when someone says that to me, I, I also say to myself quietly at the same time, thank you, Lord. Right. Because and, without his gifts right. and without his anointing on what I do, I would not be able to do well, it. Well, and, and here's an example. You're 65 now, Jeff. You had to okay. remind me. I know. That. Well, we both are. <laughs> yeah. And we grow when we free ourselves of the need to feel bigger than others. And this is what really, right. I mean, one of the first things that someone said to me when we moved to Nashville almost 12 and a half years ago, the very first thing that a, a person down here said, oh, my goodness, you were a big fish in a little pond up there in Delaware. But, man, you're going to move down here and you're going to be the little fish in a big pond. And I appreciated what she said. Right. However, it is true. And, but that's it, true. It, but it was true. never okay. in my intention uh, in no, no. to become uh, a big fish. A big fish. That, that, that we've never been about that since 1975. No. But uh, I did yeah. know the secret. And it happened immediately when we got here. Mm-hmm. The secret was the the spirit of your heart and reaching out and helping other musicians, right. helping other singers. Right. I mean, Jeff, and I, I'm, they don't know it, but I know this. I know you personally have helped name recognition type people that have a household name is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. And you have worked diligently for them in the background, uh, and not even charging some of them. I mean, just your expenses, and that's about it, on, on a couple of these album projects. And so when I say that, 
We don't have millions of dollars to invest in ministry, but we do have this ability to help other people. Right. And if I could grab uh, a 21-year-old aspiring artist right now and say, listen, if you want to do this thing for God, get, get, get your eyes and your, and your heart out of the clouds and start helping people and watch how God promotes you. Right. Right. And so it goes to the next one, which would be the, you know, my principle of optimism. You know, I, I'm going to spare you that, you know, the cliches about the glass half full and the glass half empty. I'm not going to talk about that. But I will say that things turn out for the best if you make the best of the way things turn out. That's good. Maybe you, and ought, so, to write, maybe you ought to write a song about I know. That. I thought of that. Yeah. But we have been dished sometimes by our own choice and our own uh, failures. We have you know, had to recover um, financially. We made some, you know, mistakes years ago, but we're we're working on that. And there's a lot of things that we're working on now. Well, yeah, because believe it or not, even though we do this podcast and even we've traveled and played music for years and we live in Nashville, here's the secret. (laughs) We're not perfect. No, no. no. We've made mistakes. But again, again, uh, just as we were as parents, we weren't perfect either, but we wanted to raise a, a children in a unified front right that you and i were never at war with each other on how we raised our kids at least not in front of our kids no well we we we, we locked them in garages but that's another story someone did yeah someone did i I wasn't involved in that i know but going from the spirit of optimism another one is the the principle of generosity of sharing the wealth you know sitting down with a young man who comes up to you jeff on a sunday morning and says wow can you show me that cord right and i've seen you do that right where you you know you had somebody do that for you many you moons ago right. many moons ago and yep. we are like like we got four minutes left in this yep, episode we sure do isn't that crazy how yeah. fast this one went i hope it's I has been enjoyable for the listener has it been for for me <laughs> well um, we're we're we, you know you know we're blessed to be a blessing right. we're not supposed to receive blessings and and whatever that form you know physical uh emotional financial state Right. That we receive this from. We're not supposed to just hold on to those and say, hey, look at me. I'm set. You know, no. everything's great. No, we're supposed to turn around, as the uh, Neil Enloe song used to say. Uh, he, 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 sho- I think he used to say, I think the lyric says, he shoves it in the front door and, and, and it goes out the back door. Yes. Yeah, or the like reverse. That. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly you're, what You're they're... not going to have to pay him a royalty because you got it really messed up. Yeah, I messed it up. <laughs> anyway, the, in, I know. the you, you get the mental, the, the right. word picture I'm trying to make in, is that we are blessed to bless others. Well, and that's, that's so. I want to say, oh, it just so desperately needed right now. Where we're we're living in a country right now that it's just amazing to me how people are just putting their hands out, want everything for free. Oh yeah, they want yeah. everything for you, free. Well, you're now <laughs> onto your fourth podcast. I know. Well, but <laughs> listen, my I have two more principles left, and we only have three minutes left go, on this specific. Go, I, I want to ask you before your voice gives out. I know, go. and it's starting the principle of intention. Okay, remember that old saying: if if you don't know where you want to go. Any road will take you there. Mm. But if you have a specific intention with your your musicianship, your artistic ability, and as a singer, as a songwriter, if you have an intention, I really do believe that God opens up those doors. Sure. Because there's a principle of intention that makes you realize that choosing something as a focus of your energy means not choosing lots of other things. Right. Right. And we've had to force ourselves to be a little more disciplined in, in how we choose and how we do our day. You have to narrow your focus. Right. Yeah. And then last of all, yes. um, as a musician, Jeff, if there's a, if there's a singer listening or, or maybe they even have uh, grandchildren or they have a child that's aspiring to be an artist in some, some way or um, some kind of a musician or singer, uh, there's the principle of expectation. Surround yourselves with people who believe in you. And Jeff, you could probably take the last minute here and just say how important that is. It was for you. Uh, well, oh yeah, it's it's absolutely vital to surround yourself with people who believe in you. Not everyone will. No. I read something today where something was talking about that, and and uh, a speaker that we know, a motivational uh, preacher and speaker that we know. Uh, said it years ago, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Right, right. And and it's vital. Not everyone is going to be in your corner. And the good news is 
you don't have to have everyone in your corner. Right. You just have to have the right people that God puts in your life and which he promises to do yeah. uh, as we serve him and as we you know, put him first, as scripture says, and he will give all these other things to you. But we have to focus on that. And we and uh, like you said, not be worried about pleasing the multitudes, but doing right. what God has called us to do. Recognize what our gifts are yep. that he's given to us, because even each, each of us have gifts. Right. Uh, you can sing in a way, in a manner that I cannot. As long as I don't have an allergy. Well, true, <laughs> true. We, we, Sorry. As long as you don't walk seven miles in a state park. I know, but like it was lovely and flowering day. trees. And yes. I had a mask on and yes. I even took my allergy medicine. Yeah. What else do Eviden- I need? <laughs> Evidently, you didn't take enough of it. Oh, well, let me tell you, Jeff Duffield. But you're going to get better. I want to I want, I want, to do something, too, that we've never done. They can get on iTunes Okay. right now as we speak and look up your latest project called Forever Green. Okay. Uh, It is just spectacular. It is one of those meditative albums that you put in your stereo or you put it in your iPod and your iPhone, wherever you play your music. And man, I'll tell you what, it has just been a blessing to so many people. It's called Forever Green by Jeff Duffield. You can get on iTunes and download that as well. There's also a a Sunday morning album that you did and you're also working on a new one, I hear. So I hear. (laughs) Yeah. We need to talk about that. We need that. to talk about that. Well, you've listened to the Subiquitous <laughs> Podcast as always. Number one, number 51, right? Yeah, 51. And we've, right. and we've got through another one, We Ollie. got through another one. Yes. Every one of you have a right to succeed. We right. do. Yes. But when you doubt yourself or when you lose your sense of purpose, you know what? You tend to telegraph that to other people. Let me just say something to you. I feel like Jeff and I are just at the very, very beginning of success. We are 65 and we're just starting. Wow. Now, that doesn't mean that I discount the other many years that we've been on the road and the 40 plus years that we've had in speaking and singing. Those were the foundation, but I feel like we're starting over and over again. And it's ironic that next week I'll be speaking at a leadership women's retreat and it's called new beginnings there you so go. here we go man behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing the in best you. is yet to come that's right and right. so to make a great dream come true you must first have the great dream yep. so yep <laughs> go out and go enjoy life but also a shout out to all musicians listening never give up and always come back to the fact that if it's not the anointing on your life Yes, you can be talented. Yes, you can be gifted. And yes, you can know all the great things of arranging. But man, ask God for the anointing on your life and watch what he does. One of the ways that you can continue to help us as we reach the world for Jesus in a whole and a most unique way is by becoming a patron. Get on Patreon. That's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Sue Duffield. And you'll find out even $5 a month. We have several patrons that just donate $5 a month. It's great. And it's a way that we can keep this podcast going. It costs us about somewhere between two to $300 a month to keep the podcast going. And of course, Couch to Kitchen with all of our one streams and different diversified ways of getting the messages out. Thank you for helping us to pay for that. And you do that every single month through patreon.com forward slash sue duffield we love you we thank you and stay tuned season two is going to be coming up in just another week you be blessed and man i'll tell you the best part of this whole process is you have a right to succeed in life and when you doubt yourself or when you lose your sense of purpose you know what happens other people sense that so don't lose your sense of purpose and don't ever doubt yourself and especially as a musician keep playing for Jesus. We love you. We'll see you next week.